It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. Hey guys, Tyler here. In my last video, I made a skish making fun of both Trump supporters and Clinton supporters. Now, in this video, I'm not playing the character on like the other skitch or the other video because I feel as though that that video is meant for comedy while this video is meant to be taken more seriously. So all my personal thoughts and feelings that I really feel about what happened in the U.S. Capitol is in this video and not in that sketch. One of the main points that I made in the sketch for the video was that Trump supporters and also Clinton supporters kind of had the same sort of reaction when it comes down to the whole entire election process. Now, I also believe that personally too, and the main reason why I think this way is because the reactions to the results are very much similar. Now, for the case of the Clinton supporters, they thought that there's no way that, of course, Donald Trump was going to win the election in 2016. As a matter of fact, a lot of people actually trust the polls to indicate that Donald Trump would actually lose the election. And sure enough, Clinton won the popular vote. However, Donald Trump won the election through the Electoral College, and many people who are on the left freaked out because of the results of that election. And of course, they had this whole entire mantra of saying that Donald Trump is not my president, and they've been doing that for the entire year. And of course, during the inauguration of Donald Trump, many liberals and many people from Antifa decided to go to D.C. to destroy cars and attack buildings. That was like when Donald Trump was elected, right? Now, let's fast forward to the 2020 election. And of course, Joe Biden chose to be, of course, the winner as the president of the United States. And of course, Harris is the vice president of the United States. And of course, as soon as the news first came out, Donald Trump made accusations of, of course, election fraud. And naturally, there was like so many supporters who also, you know, could not believe the results of that. And so what happened during that whole entire time at the U.S. Capitol in the building when they started to storm in was that four people actually died. Four people died believing that the whole entire election was fraudulent. And it's really sad to see this whole entire thing just play out. Because to me, no amount of lies is worth dying for just because you personally disagree with the results. If you actually believe that, of course, the election was stolen, you should probably do it in a very legal way. Of course, you should probably challenge the claims of fraud in courts if you have to, but I don't think anybody should go in the whole entire Senate and just storm inside. Because to me at least, the whole entire idea of just storming inside sounds to me like a coup d'etat to me, but what do I know? Now, of course, people who are Trump supporters are also saying that, of course, uh, Biden is not my president. And so to me, there's like some sort of similarity right there. And of course, there was like a lot of people who are crying over, it's like to me, the reactions from Trump supporters and the reactions from, of course, the Clinton supporters are like no different. And the outcome, of course, like the violent outcome, of course, storming to the Senate is similar to how Antifa also went out and destroyed buildings. However, I noticed that the reactions from the media communications places, as well as the other kind of parts of Twitter, have been really, really interesting to say the least. The first bit of news that I saw was that a person actually claimed that the people who stormed inside of the U.S. Capitol were not really Trump supporters, that the people who stormed inside are actually Antifa. Some pretty compelling evidence from a facial recognition company showing that some of the people who breached the Capitol today were not Trump supporters. They were masquerading as Trump supporters and in fact were members of the violent terrorist group Antifa. Now, we should seek to build America up, not tear her down and destroy her. And I am sure glad that at least for one day, I didn't hear my Democrat colleagues calling to defund the police. I find it so strange and also so bizarre that now U.S. politicians are actually caring about Antifa. 
because for the longest period of time since freaking July of last year in 2020, it seemed as though that nobody was actually giving a crap about Antifa. As a matter of fact, during the debates, Joe Biden actually said that Antifa is not some sort of group, that Antifa is pretty much an idea. And it's so funny now that any sort of, you know, t domestic terrorist act nowadays is now Antifa, including people who are not Antifa. That is so strange. It is so strange that now they care right after Trump, you know, got, you know, kicked out. He's going to be kicked out very soon as president. How they actually care about how Antifa, of course, treat people. And to me, it's so strange and so bizarre to call a group of people Antifa when, it's, when they're not really Antifa in the slightest. Now, the next comment that I found to be the most interesting, of course, and that's interesting, quote unquote, has to be the comments from Joe Biden. Now, Joe Biden stated that it's so unfair that they treat Trump supporters differently in the Capitol and that they might actually treat Black Lives Matter differently, I guess because they're black or something. What we saw yesterday in plain view was another violation of the fundamental tenet of this nation. Not only do we see the failure to protect one of the three branches of our government, we also saw a clear failure to carry out equal justice. I don't know if you used to say in the Senate, excuse a point of personal privilege. A little over an hour and a half after the chaos started, I got a text from my granddaughter, Finnegan Biden, who's a senior in her last semester at the University of Pennsylvania. She sent me a photo of military people in full military gear, scores of them lining the steps of the Lincoln Memorial because of protests by Black Lives Matter. She said, Pop, this isn't fair. No one can tell me that if had been a group of Black Lives Matter protesting yesterday, there wouldn't have been, they wouldn't have been treated very, very differently than the mob of thugs that stormed the Capitol. We all, we all know that's true. And it is unacceptable, totally unacceptable. First and foremost, I think it's like actually, you know, very, very different. For starters, of course, Black Lives Matter and Antifa have been destroying buildings since freaking July. They managed to make their own personal autonomous zone multiple times at this point, And of course, nobody did a thing about that. Of course, during the whole entire outrage of the media, they seem as though that they never seem to, you know, condemn the actions of Antifa or Black Lives Matter when it comes down to the riots and burning buildings and attacking people. But for some reason, the media states that the people who are Trump supporters did something really terrible. And obviously, obviously, I do in fact agree that what the Trump supporters did during that whole entire incident in the Capitol was really terrible. That is true. But why is it that they prioritize what Trump supporters do in comparison to what Black Lives Matter and Antifa have been doing for months and months and months upon end? It seems as though, to me at least, there is some sort of double standard when it comes down to reporting. Like any sort of bias for like the candidates like for you know Clinton or like for Biden, their bias is very out in the open. And so anything wrong that they actually have done, they don't call them out, they don't point out the finger. But any type of stuff that is of course bad against Trump, they point the finger of course like towards Trump all the time. So I think news stations should actually be impartial when it comes to this kind of stuff and not have some sort of favoritism because favoritism to me is not journalism. And of course, of course, there was this article that was done by Vox News, supposedly Vox News, that claims that Gamergate, according to Zoe Quinn, is the main reason why we're in this sort of mess when it comes down to the Capitol. Like, Gamergate started in like uh, 2014, 
and I believe it ended around like uh, 2016 if I'm not mistaken. It's been like at least seven plus years since Gamergate has ended, right? And why are we still talking about Gamergate even though Gamergate has been dead for a long time? Like every single year, like I notice, like these journalists, they always claim that something is the fault of Gamergate even though Gamergate as a movement has been dead for this like much time. And so it's kind of strange because I remember seeing a study a long time ago that shows that the most most gamer gators who are who were part of the movement were actually liberals, and so it's actually funny that they're putting the blame of gamer gates onto like these Trump supporters when in fact most people, according to that study I remember seeing a long time ago, most people of gamer gate are actually liberals or left wing. So that's kind of strange, that's kind of bizarre, that they're still blaming Gamergate as like, you know, the boogeyman for everything that's wrong in the world. Now, the last thing I want to bring up, of course, before I end this video, has to be the response to Donald Trump. Now, many social media companies are claiming that they want to get rid of Donald Trump. As a matter of fact, some already have been taking action against Donald Trump because of recent events that happened at the US Capitol, because he keeps saying that there's election fraud, and of course the followers keep trying to, you know, storm into like the Capitol to stop things yesterday. And so here's my personal thoughts and feelings about this whole entire idea of removing Donald Trump from social media. Personally, I think that, of course, as long as Donald Trump is not inciting violence, then of course he should probably have his social media accounts. And to me, by just trying to shut down his social media, it's actually going to make people more curious about what he has to say and to go underground when it comes down to the information or whatever you want to say on his social media. And so, yes, I do in fact disagree with him a lot. I don't think he's actually suited to be a leader in this moment. And the fact that he's still trying to feel the idea that the election was stolen from him is not going to help much for like a lot of cases. However, at the same time, if he's not inciting violence, if he's not trying to encourage people to do awful stuff, since he's also been also denouncing people who actually, you know, did these awful stuff yesterday, I don't see why he should be removed from social media. It's like, it's so strange to me. There's also just like some sort of double standard that they're trying to remove Donald Trump from social media, right? They're trying to remove him but they still have people like, you know, Maduro on social media and he's pretty much starving his people to death and killing his own people. But Donald Trump is gets removed because of, of course, some supporters doing something he did not actually approve. That doesn't make any sense. That does not make any sense in the slightest. All this sort of stuff right now is kind of showing the hypocrisy like a lot of people that I've been showing. But uh, what do you guys think? Tell me in the comment section down below, and I'll see you guys in the next video. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. He's your only black friend, so he's your best black friend. I wouldn't trade him for another black friend. Because black friends are rare, as you should be aware. He smiles like Richard Pryor, so just sit and stare. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler.